Hey there, it's Todd, and today I want to talk about how to shoot a music video. Now, I have my cool retro record label shirt on today, so obviously that means I am an authority on all things music video. Let's find out if that's true. So I've created quite a few music videos over the years, and I'm just gonna go through my creative thought process on how I make music videos and show you some examples on things that I've done in the past. So before we get into the weeds of the creative thought process, let's just go over the very, very basic equipment you'll need to shoot a music video. Now, obviously you need a camera. I would recommend something with an interchangeable lens. I would say a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. And this could be an entry-level camera like a Canon Rebel or something along those lines, whether it's Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, or whatever the case may be. Now I'm going to assume that you know the basics on how to use that camera. If you don't, I'll leave a link in the description to some videos on the basics of how to use your camera. Moving on. Now, obviously, if you have a camera with interchangeable lenses, you're going to want to have some options when it comes to those lenses. Now, maybe you don't have a lot of money. Maybe you only have the kit lens. Hopefully, you have one that has a wide range, like an 18 to 135. That way, you can get the wide shots and you can get some close-ups. Now, if you do have multiple lenses available to you, the same thing still applies. You're going to want a wide lens to get some nice wide shots. You're going to want some long lenses to get some close-ups. The bottom line is that you want to have a lot of options so that you can get a variety of shots and looks in your music video. The next thing to consider is lights. You're probably going to need lights if you're shooting indoors or at nighttime. If you don't have access to lights, well, shoot your music video during the day and use the sun. And lastly, the most important thing is that you can hear the song when the artist is performing. You've got to have playback. This could be as simple as just having a Bluetooth speaker, or you could bring out a bigger system just so that you can play the song back and the artist can perform with it. You're going to want to get the best performance from your artist, and if they can't hear the song because it's playing out of your phone, that's not going to work have a Bluetooth speaker, have something nice so they can hear it and that it's loud and they can feel the energy and they can give you that energy in the music video. Also, don't forget when you're playing back your music, make sure your camera is recording sound. Now, it doesn't need to be the best quality sound, but you are going to need that to sync everything up in editing. So that's pretty much the basics when it comes to the equipment that you'll need to shoot a music video. Again, if you're not quite sure on how to use some of that gear, check out some of the links to some of my other videos in the description. But for now, we're gonna move on. Let's talk about the creative thought process because if you don't have your ideas and your thoughts together on how you're going to shoot this music video, how you're going to tell the story of this music video, then it's really not gonna go well. It's not gonna be a good experience for you, for the artist, and you're not going to get that project that you can be proud of and show everybody at the end of the day. So the first thing I wanna talk about is just deciding to shoot a music video for an artist. Now, if you're getting offered a big budget from some big band, then this probably doesn't apply to you. But when you're just starting out, we all know bands and we all know artists that might need a music video. The one thing I would recommend is that choose a genre or an artist or a song that you really, really like, that you really enjoy, that you're passionate about. You're going to spend a lot of time with this song, thinking about the song, shooting the song, editing this video. So make sure that you really, truly enjoy the song and the artist and the genre and that there's a good working relationship there, especially if it's a no budget or a low budget video. It's not really worth it to stress yourself out if you're not really enjoying the process or the project or the song for that matter. And I'll be honest, some of my favorite music video projects are ones that I did for next to nothing, but I love the song and I love the artist and they came out great. All right, so let's say you found an artist that you really like and you wanna shoot a video for them and maybe they have a couple dollars, maybe they don't, but regardless of the budget, Make sure you live within your means. Whether it's big budget or no budget, make sure that you're creating a concept that you can actually pull off with the budget and the resources that you have. So whether it's additional talent or locations, make sure that you have access to them or that you can pay for those things. If you can't, use what you got. Because the worst thing that you could do is pitch an idea to an artist that you can't pull off with the resources that you have or pitch them an idea that they just can't afford. To me, that's just a big waste of time. So be creative, but live within your means. Also, when you're dreaming up a concept, be creative. Sure, some things are always gonna be the same. You're probably always going to have an artist perform in front of the camera. But I always try to do something new, whether it's using a new piece of gear or a new plugin in the edit, just to try to do something a little more creative and take it to the next level. And the last thing I would say when it comes to the concept phase, definitely listen to the artist. They wrote the song, they understand the song, they might have some really great ideas. Of course, you're a genius in your own right, but they're a creative, you're a creative, listen to them. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is probably the most important thing that I've discovered when shooting music videos. And if you don't get anything else from this video, pay attention to this. 
When you start dreaming up your concept for the music video and living within your means, limit yourself to three locations, to three setups, to three scenes. Let me explain. Now your average song is probably gonna have three verses, three hooks, an intro, an outro, probably a bridge two thirds of the way through. And I've always found that limiting myself to three scenes or three locations or three setups really kind of complements that structure of the song. So what do I mean by three scenes? Well, one of your scenes is probably going to be the artist performing to camera. A second one may be a story narrative where you have actors performing something that has to do with the song. And then a third one could be a combination of the two. Maybe it's a little bit story, maybe it's a little bit performance. You also could have a video that's just three separate performances of the artist, especially if they need their ego stroked, which most of them do. But why limit yourself to only three scenes or locations? Because you don't want to spend your entire time running to a dozen locations only to shoot a handful of shots. I have found that if you limit your locations to three, you can go in and shoot a lot of coverage, get a lot of cool shots, and spend your time shooting instead of moving from location to location. And in every video I've done, I've limited myself to three locations or setups or less. Let me show you some examples. Here's a song by Daytona called Payback, and there's three sections. There's the store performance, there is the performance in the car, and then there's the story portion of the guy that he's looking for at the playground. That's all it is. Now, I shoot a lot of different coverage in those locations. We shoot different things in the car, we shoot different stuff at the store, we shoot a lot of different things when we are at the playground. But I didn't have to run around to a dozen places. It was literally just three scenes, three locations, and I spent the time getting the performance that I wanted to make the best music video I could. Now here's another one with only two scenes. Now this is by Rebecca Pearl, a song called Before I Fall. The first scene is the performance scene and that's up in a tree. So that took a little bit of time. I wanted to make sure she was safe and get a lot of cool shots. The second scene is in a park with her and the young man she's discussing in the song and pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but pretty effective. Now here's another one by an artist named Cha Chili called Roma's Burning. We had a little bit more money on this one, but I still kept it to just two scenes. If you look at it here, you basically have a performance as well as some story elements in the gentleman's club. And you've got the same thing at the church. You've got a performance and some story elements. We shot a lot of different things at those locations, but I didn't have to move everybody. We went to one location, we did part of the story, we did part of the performance, and I got a lot of great shots. And the only thing that's not really in those two locations is when she's running outside, but it was literally right outside of the gentleman's club. But whether you consider it two or three locations, I stuck to that format and it came out really great. And I've been using this format for a long time. You can see it right here in one of the very first music videos I did for somebody else. Please don't judge. But you can see performance in the record store, performance in the car, and performing at the sorority house. One, two, three, boom. And the last video I wanna show you is also from Daytona. And this one's really interesting because we only used one location but we shot a lot of different things there. We didn't have much of a budget for this project, so we went out, shot it all out in one day at a skate park. Now, obviously, we turned the camera to different locations. You know, I shot a little bit on one side with a crane. I shot a little bit over here with the slider. I went around the corner and shot a little bit more with the glide cam, and then I shot some B-roll, some guys skateboarding and things like that, and that's pretty much the video. We probably shot this out in about four hours, but even with it being one location, you could still look at it and see it being broken down into just three scenes. I basically have him where I'm using the crane, the location where I'm using the slider, and then the other location where I'm using the glide cam. So yeah, you could say, Todd, yeah, sure you're at one location, but you move the camera all over the place. I did, but at the end of the day, it still ended up being basically three performance scenes with a little bit of B-roll on top, so boom. So the next thing I wanna talk about is coverage. So you've come up with a concept that lives within your means, You've limited your ideas to three major scenes, three major locations. So once you're on set, you're gonna wanna shoot a lot of coverage or you're gonna wanna shoot a lot of different angles of the same performance. You're gonna wanna get a wide shot. You're gonna wanna get a medium shot, a close-up, an exterior, details, extreme close-ups. You're gonna wanna get a lot of different coverage so that you have a lot of options when you're editing everything together later on. You can see across all of my music videos that I shoot a lot of coverage. And I would say that when you watch the videos, noticing that I'm only in three locations or three specific scenes, that 
it seems way more dynamic and not really that limited because I shoot so much coverage. The great thing about limiting yourself to three locations is that you can get all this coverage, that you can take the time to get the very best performance from the artist, because at the end of the day, that's what they want to see. They want to see themselves looking awesome. And when it comes to getting coverage, this is where all those lenses or lens options will come in handy. You're going to want to have lenses or a lens that can get you that wide shot, that can get you that close up. One lens that I always make sure that I have on any music video shoot is a wide angle lens. I use it all the time, especially for camera movement, which brings me on to my next topic, which is camera movement. So my thought process is this. Music has an energy to it, whether it's a slow song or a dance song or whatever the case may be. It's got an energy. It might make you dance. It might make you bob your head. Whatever it does, it's got an energy. And I think your video should reflect that as well. So as a general rule, whenever I'm shooting music videos, I try to keep the camera moving at all times. Now that could be as simple as me just hand holding it and doing some whip pans back and forth, or it could be having it on a crane, having it on a slider, having it on a glide cam. Even if it's just on a tripod and the head is loose and I'm just slightly moving that camera just to kind of keep the kinetic energy moving throughout the video. So the bottom line is this, you wanna match the energy of the song and energize your music video by adding camera movement to each and every shot if possible. And one of the last things I wanna talk about is just your basic camera placement. Obviously, people's go-to is to put the camera on a tripod at eye level and just have the artist sing right into the camera. But consider placing it lower to make the artist look larger than life. And putting it a little higher can maybe make them look a little smaller and it can be a little more flattering because they lift their chin up, fills their face with light a little bit more. Just really consider your camera placement and if it's helping to tell your story in your music video when you're picking your shots. And I'll tell you what, my favorite shot of all time is a combination of camera movement and camera placement and a wide angle lens. I always use wide angle lens on the ground, on a slider with the artist going into the camera. I use it all the time. So sue me. I think it looks awesome. And that's about it. That's my basic thought process when it comes to shooting music videos. And you know, I get it, you know, all songs are different. All artists are different. So all music videos are gonna be different. But regardless of the video or the song, and if you wanna see the videos I showed in this video here, I'll leave a link so you can watch them in their entirety. But regardless of the artist or the video, I still follow the same basic rules. I try to stay within a budget and shoot within my means. I try to limit my locations and scenes to three or less. I try to shoot lots of coverage. I try to use lots of camera movement. And I try to put the camera in a position that's interesting and exciting and, and complements the artist. And that gives me lots of options in the editing room. And you know, at the end of the day, your music video is gonna be made in the editing room. Now, when it comes to editing a music video, that's another topic for another day. So with that being said, Thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.